know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. I'm going to run with God this year. Talk to me. Say, I'm going to run with God this year. Zechariah 1, verse number 17. You know, God says something powerful there. He says, through prosperity shall my cities be spread abroad. Do you know it's in the interest of God to prosper you? It makes sense for him to prosper you because if he prospers you, he can expand his kingdom. Do you know he actually wants to prosper you more than you want to prosper? But the only thing standing in the way is your mindset. Is your belief system. You've got to believe what I've just told you, that God wants you to prosper more than you want to prosper. Because God wants to spread his kingdom. He says, through prosperity shall my cities be spread Abroad. I've seen this already. Okay? Now, look at this. It's the year to build. And it is. So, there's no ways that God would want you to remain on the same income. Hmm? God, in his wisdom, obviously must want to increase your income so he can build, you can build his. Does that make sense? But that will not happen if you don't change your mindset. New mind. New year. New perspective. Say new perspective. Say I'm going to see things differently. I'm going to talk about things differently. Now I want you to write this down. New year, new actions. I want you to act in accordance to where you are going. I didn't say I want you to act in accordance with your feelings. Because you've been acting in accordance with your feelings and your feelings have been keeping you in the same place. There are two major things that will keep you from the promised land. One is anger. Two is doubt. That's just a by the way, you know, that's a whole sermon. But <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to say that your emotions are one of the biggest hindrances to fulfilling your destiny. Because you do what you feel like. As opposed to what you should resolve to do. Resolve. Res there is what is called the power of resolve. You, you can't beat somebody with resolve. Because when I have resolve, come rain, come thunder, I'm still going to come to church. I'm not going to let water that I've just come out of in the shower Stop me from coming to worship my God. That's a decision. That's a decision. There's nothing as powerful as a changed mind. Ooh, I wish somebody got this. There's, there's, there's nothing as powerful as a changed mind. The most powerful church service is the service in which you change your mind. It's not the service in which you fall. It's not the service in which you jerk. It's not the service in which you make noise. No, it's the service in which you change your So when you tell me this was a powerful service, I'm going to ask you, what did you change your mind about? Because there's nothing as powerful as a changed mind. Say, I've changed my mind. Come on, talk to me. Say, I've changed my mind. You know, you've got to also tell the devil you've changed your mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> devil, I've changed my mind about that thing. You know, things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. You can, no matter what they're offering at Circus Nightclub, I can't go back. <laughs> I used to. But I... I changed my, you see, you don't even have to change your address. <laughs> you know, because maybe you used to go to circus because it was near. <laughs> but you know, you can move from Strathaven to Chitungwiza and still be found in circus. Because though you've changed your address, 
<laughs> You've not changed your mind. Somebody say, tell the devil. <laughs> I changed my mind. That's a word for somebody. I've changed my mind. You've got to change your mind about procrastination. Bamkurundicha. Cannot teacher. 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 How many things that God has given you have died in procrastination? If there's something you need to kill for you to prosper, it's procrastination. This thing is messing with so many people. You have powerful ideas, but they're useless because you don't do them. You don't do them. You talk about them, but you don't do them. You think about them, but you don't do them. It's, it's been five years. I will not wait. I will not wait. Apart from Utaura, I will wait. If all your words were turned into actions, you'd be a billionaire. You'd be a billionaire. Watch this. You can't talk and run at the same time. Go home and try it. I mean, <laughs> you know, maybe except for all those, you know, old school African parents. Tika <laughs> kubata You can't do it for very long. Because if you're really running, you're focused on the running. What are you running with? For the sake of time, trust me, it's in the Bible. Isaiah 40, 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I want you to write this in the Bible. It's going to, in, in your notebook, it's going to be powerful. Write this. Lord, renew my strength during this new part of the year. Give me new strength for the new year. Give me new strength for the new year. They that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Shall renew their strength. This way, watch this. They are waiting upon who? But listen to what they do. They shall run. <laughs> he didn't say they shall lie down and sleep. So you've been waiting wrong. God wants to see you running while you're waiting. I'm waiting for the next level. But I'm going to run on the level on which I am. I can't run on the steps. Uh, let me not get ahead of myself. Okay. On the level I am, plain level, I know what I'm doing. I know what I want to achieve. So to make progress quicker, I'm not going to walk. I'm going to run. I'm running while waiting for the next level. I'm not saying I'm only going to run when I'm on the next level. I'm running on the level I am at. So if I want promotion to the next step, I run on this step. You don't run on the steps. Because if you try and run up the steps, you fall. You run on the level you are at. Are you running where you are? Because there's many people who say, I'll put more effort when there's more money. 
And God is saying, I'm not adding any more money until I see more effort. Habakkuk 2. Okay, open this one because I need you to see it. Habakkuk 2. Habakkuk 2, verse, verse 2. two. Uh-huh. Then the Lord answered Okay, me. in fact, read Habakkuk 1, verse 1. What does Habakkuk 1, verse 1 say? Yes. No, no, no. 1, verse 1. The burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw. Uh-huh. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry? How long shall I? So, look at this. The pro- look at me. The prophet Habakkuk, please look at me. The prophet Habakkuk was talking about burdens, crying. Huh? And he says, how long shall I? Cry. Now, maybe verse 3, verse 4, in your Bible somewhere, it should say the Lord's first answer. Does any of us Bible say that? So, so the prophet, look at me, don't look at your Bible. The prophet was saying to the Lord, trust me, it's there. The prophet was saying to the Lord, how long shall I? How long shall I cry? This one. So, in, in, in chapter 1, verse 3, verse 4, somewhere there, he gave him the first answer. But the second answer, and we're not going to focus on the first answer. The second answer he was given in Habakkuk 2, verse number 1. If your Bible says the Lord's first answer, chapter 2, from verse 1, just above that, it should say the Lord's second answer. If you've got a proper Bible. Alright? How many Bibles say that? In italics, the Lord's second answer. Now, I said all of that to say this. The Lord was answering what Habakkuk was asking. What was he asking? How long shall I? How long shall I cry? This is the answer to crying. Chapter 2, verse number 2. Write the vision down. Hello? We're going to talk about vision maybe next week or the week after. Make it that he who reads with it, may not walk with it. Run 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 with it. You have no money to take because you've been walking with it. You've been lying with it. You've been procrastinating with it. Run with it. You're selling second-hand clothes. Run with it. You must know what you're doing and you must be known for what you do. Run with it. Run with it. You are not running with it. Don't play with it. Run with it. Run with it. There is a race. Run with it. It's not a race against other people. It's a race against me. Paul said, I have run the race that is set before me. I have finished my course. This way, therefore there's a what? Crown of righteousness laid up for me. A- am I in a Bible reading, church? Did Paul say that or not? Alright? So what did Paul do with the race? If you walk, are you going to win? The same Paul comes in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I think verse 24 to 27, he says, run to win. Are you running to win? Are you going to win at this pace? <sighs> Write this down. Are you waiting for something you should be running after? Ooh, I hope I'm not casting pearls on swines. Please, Lord, help me. Are you walking when you should be running? Are you strolling when you should be running? And he says, run with patience. Running with patience. He's not talking about Usain Bolt. Because life is not a 100 meter dash. Life is a long distance race. So all of a sudden, when I say running, I'm not talking about sprinting. I'm talking about pacing yourself. That's running with patience that the Bible talks about. You said Bolt's got no patience in a 100 meter. If you have patience in a 100 meter race, you will lose. But watch those who run 5,000 meters. Are you listening to me? They run with patience. They pace themselves. Watch this. 
they position themselves. I might not be at the front, but I'm running. You might be ahead of me, but I'm running. I'm running my own race. We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal.